Hi, can you hear us, Ben? Yep, I can hear that. Cool. We're, we're just along for the ride over here. <laughs> that was the youngest thing. Are you happy to lead, Ben? Yeah, cool. yeah. I think um, looks like we have a few people, so I guess we're we're good to go. So um, today we are going to be looking at the RPG game. So I'm going to send a link for the for the instructions for this one. Um, you might want to um, open the guide up and follow along um, with the guide on this one because um, it's a it's a little more complex and there's a little more code um, than possibly we've seen before. So let's start by seeing what we're, what we're going to be creating. So we're going to be creating an RPG game and that stands for a role playing game. So in this game, um, we walk around the house and we're going to be um, collecting items and fighting monsters, which is quite exciting. So we can see here, so um, we've got some instructions so it's saying we need to get to the garden with a key and a potion and avoid the monsters. It says we can, we've got two different commands that we can use. We can type go and then a direction and we can type get with the name of an item. So it tells us that we're um, currently in the hall and if we have a look in our inventory, so these are the items that we're holding, we can see that we've got nothing. That's just an empty list here. But it can, but we also um, have been told that we see a key. So what we could do is we can type uh, get key. And that's going to pick up the key. The other thing we can do in this game, so we've we've tried the, the get command. We also have um, a go command. So on this one, this is how we move about the house. So I'm um, going to try and move in a direction. So I'm going to say go south. Oh, looks like uh, I've gone south, but a monster's got me. So the game's over. So hopefully that will give you a bit of an idea about um, how how this game is going to work. So um, to start this project, um, we've got some starter code that's already there for us. Now to get that, we need to go to rpf.io forward slash RPG ON. I'm going to copy that link and I'm going to put that in the chat. And when we go to that link, we're going to see that the project has already been started for, uh, for us. So there's a lot of code already in there. And we're going to have a look at um, what some of that means in a second, but I'll just give you a minute just to, to open that up. Okay, great. So we're going to have a look at um, uh, some of the things. We're going to have a quick overview of the code that we've already got here. Now, this may seem a bit intimidating at first, seeing this big file with lots of... Sorry, code. hold on, Ben. I think uh, we might just need to paste the links in again, because I think we only sent them to the panelists. So just a sec, I'll do that for you. Lovely. That was my mistake. So the top one of those is the project and the bottom one is the link to the starter code. So hopefully everybody will get that now. Thanks. Cool. 
Right. So hopefully we're on here. So um, so I was just saying that it can sometimes look a bit intimidating when we um, when we go into a file and we see lots of code already there. And sometimes um, I, I feel quite intimidated when I when I look at some code and I see it, there's loads and I don't un immediately understand what it is. But this is quite um, this is something that happens quite often to us quite often when we uh, we're not working from something on something from scratch we're actually making changes to something that someone else has already made so this is an important skill to learn so if we have a little look in in this file first of all we see these um bits of green text that start with the um the hash symbol now these are comments so what a comment is in our code it doesn't actually do anything to our program it just gives a bit of extra information to the the person who's doing the coding so that they um so that they know what's going on. So for example, here, we've um, we've got a function. I know it's a function because it starts with this DEF. So that's uh, that means we're defining a function. And I can use this comment to, to see what this function is doing. So, so this function here, um, I've been told that this is printing a main menu and the commands. And if I have a look at the, the actual code that's in the function, I can see I can see that that seems to be the case. So I can see um, a print command, and then it's saying RPG game commands go and get. So that seems quite straightforward. So what's next in the file? We have another um, another function, and again we can see it's a function because it starts with DEF. So we're defining a function called show status. And what what are the comments inside here? So we have um, so we're printing the current uh, the player's current status. Okay. Um, so it looks like um, we have a print statement here that tells us which room we're in. We then have another one that tells us what's in the the current inventory, and it also says um, print an item if there is one. So it looks like if there's an item in the room. Um, it tells us UCA, and we saw something um, similar to that when we when we had a look at the the example game at the beginning. I think we saw a key in the room. So what is there next in the file? So um, so we have a comment here saying we have an inventory which is initially em empty. Um, so we can see here we're defining a variable called inventory, and we're setting that to an array which is empty. So that's the open and close square brackets. It's just an empty array. Next, we have um, a dictionary, which says it's linking one room to another. So, so we see the hall. We have a, a list of rooms, which has a hall. And then to the south of that, we have the kitchen. And we have the kitchen to the north of that is the hall. OK, so we can start to get an idea of what this, um, what this house looks like. Next, um, what do we do? So we start the player in the hall. So it looks like we're setting the current room to hall when we start the game. And then we're um, calling the show instructions function. So I think we've seen that before. So show instructions, that was right at the top of the file. So when we, when we call the function by doing this, writing show instructions, then it's going to print these instructions here. After that, we've got a while loop. So it's saying while true. Now that means this loop is just going to go round and round forever. Um, so each time it loops, we're going to show the status. So that's another um, function that we've seen before. This was the one that tells us which room we're in, what's in our inventory. Um, and then we ask the player for a move. Um, so we. Um, so while the the so we have uh, we define a function uh, a variable called move here, and while it's empty, we ask the we ask the player for some input, and we assign that to move. Um, then what we do is we have a look at what the player has inputted. So if they're saying to go somewhere, we have a look at um, in which direction they want to go. Then we check if that direction is allowed. So say, um, so say we wanted to move south, we'd say, um, is there room to the south of the current room we're in? If if there is that, then we can set the current room to this new, um, to where this uh, new room is. 
Otherwise, we just print a message to the player saying that we can't go that way. Otherwise, if they type get, which was the other um, command we've got. So remember, this is the one that we can use to pick up items. So we're going to say, so if the room contains an item, and the item is the one that they want to get, then we can add the item to our inventory and we'll, we'll give them a little message to say that they've picked up the item. And we also want to remove the item from the room because once we've picked it up, we don't want the item to stay there. Um, otherwise, we're going to tell them, um, tell the player that they can't get the item that they tried to pick up. If we um, have a look at the instructions, we can kind of see a little diagram of what the house looks like. So I guess that um, that might make it a bit clearer. So if we're in the hallway, and if we're in the hall, we can go south to the kitchen. Um, and if we're in the kitchen, we can go north to the hall. So let's try that out. So I'm currently in the hall. I can um, type go south. And that's going to put me in the kitchen. So I was in the hallway. I've gone south into the kitchen. If I'm in the kitchen, I should be able to go north back into the hall. OK, so these are the only two rooms that we have at the moment. However, if I'm in the hall and I try and go uh, north again, it's going to tell us we can't go that way. And the reason um, for that is if we have a look in the list of rooms, we can see we're currently in the hall and we can go south because we tried that earlier and that would um, take us to the kitchen. But there's no rooms to the north at the moment. So it's, it's telling us we can't go that way. So, so we have this list of um, rooms here um, with, the, with the other rooms that are to the side of that room. So what we could do is we could add another room to our maze game. So um, I'm going to call this room the dining room. OK. And then I need to um, put a colon afterwards and then an open curly brace. And I need to, from the, from the dining room, I need to say what rooms are to the other direction, other directions of that room, if that makes sense. Maybe not. We'll have a look at a diagram. So, so we can see we've added this dining room here. And we can see that to the north, there's nothing. Um, to the east, there's nothing. To the south, there's nothing. But to the west, there is the hall. So we need to say under dining room, we want to put west, and we put that in um, single quotes. We're going to say um, kitchen. There we go. So we've got a, our new dining room, and to the west of the dining room is the kitchen. Then after that, we need to make sure we've got um, a closing curly brace there. So sometimes these curly braces can get a bit confusing about um, about uh, uh, for for which one is which. But what we want to um, make sure is that for for every um, curly brace we have a matching um, opening and closing brace. So I think I've actually got too many there. Um, so we see for this curly brace, we have the opening one here, the closing one here. And if we actually put our cursor just after the brace, we see that the um, the other one is um, highlighted. It's got a little line around it. So we can see that we've got an opening and closing one there. Um, we've got an opening and closing there, opening and closing there, opening and closing there. So it's very important that we have um, the correct number of these otherwise we'll get um, we'll get an error when we try and run our program okay so we've put our um, 
our dining room in and we've said to the west of the dining room is the hall but we won't be able to get to the to the dining room yet because um because we need to give a direction from the hallway to the dining room so our new dining room is to the east of our hallway so we need to add that in as well so in our hall at the end here we need to put a comma and then underneath where it says south we need to put east and then a colon and then the dining room So I think someone's pointed out that I've actually um, I've actually typed this wrong. So I've actually put um, that the to the west of the dining room is the kitchen, but that's wrong. Um, someone's pointed out that to the to the west of the um, dining room is actually the hall. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Cool. So we've got our um, so it looks like we've got an, a new room added to our game. So let's try it out and see if we can um, go into our new room. So I'm going to stop my program. I'm going to run it again. OK, so we're currently in the hallway. So hopefully, if we move to the east, we should move into our new room. So I'm going to type go east. Great, so I'm now in the dining room. So it looks like um, we've got a new room in our maze game that we can go into. Now, hopefully, when we go back west, we should move back to our hall. Cool, that works. So we've been able to move from the hallway to our dining room and then back to the hallway again. So I'll just wait a minute for everyone um, to make sure that they've got that working. We've managed to get our dining room working, Ben. Cool. Might be worth doing a little... Um, Copy and paste trick. <laughs> a little um, recap of what you just did in the code. I don't know if you could make the code a bit bigger by zooming in to show people. Sure. So um, so we've got our, our list of rooms here. Um, so this is... Um, so this is the bit of code that, that tells the game where all the, the rooms are located. So when we started, we only had these two rooms. We had the hallway, we had the hall and the kitchen. So we could move down or south um, from the hall to the kitchen. And then we could move from the kitchen back north um, to the hall. So we decided that we wanted to add another room, a dining room. Um, and we wanted our dining room to be to the to the east of the hall yeah, and, there, and there can be a potion in the lab so um so we moved so we so we added some code we added the dining room into our list of rooms um and we said to the west of the dining room was the hall and um and then we also said to the to the east of our hall was the dining room what so, did that, we do so that? that allows us to um what's that so that allows us to move in and out of the dining room. Cool. So next up, we've got a little bit of a challenge. Can we add another room to our maze game? So for example, what if we want a, a living room added? And I want my living room to be here. I want it to be south of the dining room. Do you think that you'd be able to do this? Have a go.
Okay, so I imagine some of you uh, um, are starting to do this now. I'm going to, to start working through this as well. Okay, so if, so if you're not quite sure, you can follow along with what I'm doing. So I want a living room. I want that to be to the south of our new dining room. So what do I need to do first? I need to add another room. So after um, the closing curly brace of the dining room, I'm going to put a comma at the end. I'm going to press enter. I'm then going to, to move backwards a bit just by hitting the backspace button just so um, it's in line with all the other rooms. I'm going to, in single quotes, I'm going to type living room. And then after that, I'm going to close the single quote and then put a colon. I then need to put um, another um, open curly brace. So this is, um, so we have a dictionary here. So these curly braces mean it's a dictionary. And within the dictionary, when e within each of the items in the dictionary, I have another dictionary. So we're saying the definition of a hall. So if you, so if you think about a dictionary, you're, you're able to look up a word and you see the definition. So what we're saying here is the definition of hall is another dictionary. And within that dictionary, the definition of south is kitchen and the definition of east is dining room. So that's why we call it a dictionary. So um, within, um, so we have in our rooms dictionary, we have an item called living room. The, the definition of that is another dictionary. And within that, we're going to put the directions that we, um, that we need uh, for our, um, to move um, from that room to the other rooms. So from our living room, we're going to say to the north of the living room is the dining room. So in uh, single quotes, I'm going to say to the north is the dining room, I think that was. That needs to be in single quotes as well. And what else? So our living room's here. So, so to the north is the dining room. And then we need to say to the west is the kitchen. So I'm going to say to the west is the kitchen. OK, so I think that's um, that was all the directions from our new room to the other rooms. But we need to remember to um, to, to put the directions from the other rooms into the living room. So our living room is going to be to the south of our dining room. So in our dining room dictionary, we need to put another entry. And we're going to say to the south of the dining room is our living room. And what else? So we've got um, so we've got our kitchen to the side here, and we can say if we go east from the kitchen, then we'll end up in our in our new living room. So we can say east, um, and that's going to take us to our new living room. Cool. So if you're having any trouble and your code's not working, you're not quite sure why, what you can do is you can press this share button at the top here and you can click link. And this will give you a link that you're able to, to copy. So if you copy this link here and send it to us in the, in the chat, then we'll be able to take a look at your code and maybe um, we'll be able to help figure out what's wrong. Cool. Okay, right, so we've now got um, four rooms in our game, which seems quite good. Let's have a go and see if we can, um, we can move into our new room. So I'm going to stop the game, start it again. Oh, it looks like I've got an error here. Okay, so let's figure out together what the problem is here. So it's highlighted this line 39. Okay, so it seems to be a problem here, bad input. 
So I'm going to have a look what's different between these ones that it's um, that is saying there's a problem and this one here. So what is different? So I can see actually there's a comma on this one at the end here that's missing here. So I reckon that is probably what the, the problem is. So I'm going to put the comma in and I'll run it again. Cool. It looks like it's worked that time. So, so we've started off in the hallway. So where can we move from here? So we could add into the move into the first room that we that we added. Um, so we'll move from the hallway east. That's going to hopefully take us to our dining room that we that we tested before, and that works well. Um, and now from our dining room, we can say we can go south. And that's going to take us to our new living room. That looks like that's working as well. So we've started off in the hallway, we've moved to the dining room, and then we've moved to our new living room. That looks like that's all working well. Great. So it looks like we've got um, we've got some rooms in our house now. But if you remember when we looked at the example game at the start, we had some items that we were able to pick up in each room. So what we can do to add these items is we can add these to our dictionary of rooms. So let's say we want to add um, a key to the hallway, which I think was the example um, in the the um, when we looked at the game at the start. So under hallway, remember with the definition of our hall is this other dictionary here. And this has a few definitions in. It has the definition of south, which takes us to the kitchen, east, which takes us to the dining room. We could add another item in this dictionary and we could call that item. So this is going to give us the name of the item that's in the room that we're able to pick up. So just like before, we're going to type item in single quotes. We're then put, going to put a colon and then we put the definition of what the item is in the hallway. So I'm going to say the item in the hall is a key. OK. Right, so hopefully once we've done that, so we've added a, a new item into our hall dictionary, we've called it item and we set the definition to key. So if we run our game again, so we started in the hallway, cool, it looks like um, that's worked because it says you see a key. So that's the item that we've um, got here. So this could be anything, so say instead of a a key, so if you put book, it would say you see a book. So we can see this is using what we've put in the dictionary here under item um, is, is what the item is in the room. So I'm just going to keep that as key for now. So if, if we remember when we had a look at the commands before that we have available to us, we can go in directions, which we've we've tried. We've moved around the maze with that. We can also pick up items with this get command. So I'm going to try and pick up my key that I've just added to the game. So if I type in the, the game, so rem remember typing in here, get key. Great, so it now looks like we've um, we've picked up the key because it says key got. And then um, it's told us we're, we're in the hall again. And our inventory, so these are the items that we've picked up previously, we now have a key. So you can see we had nothing before and we've now got a key. The other thing we notice is before it told us you see a key. It doesn't tell us that anymore because we've picked it up and we've removed it from the room. OK, so what we can do now is we could add some items to, to some of the other rooms in the house. So I'll, I'll 
I'll give you a minute so that you can um, you can add whatever items you want. So, for example, you could add um, a book in one room, or you could add a, a shield or a magic potion in some of the other rooms. So, I'll just give you a minute. You can add any items you want um, to the room. Ben? Yes? Um, in the kitchen, we've put a stinky onion. Stinky onion in the kitchen? Well, that's not particularly nice, but I suppose the, the kitchen is probably the best place for it. Um, so, on balance, it could be worse, I suppose. Um, cool. All right. So, hopefully, you've added some items to the room that you're able to go around and pick up. So, have you tried picking up your stinky onion? Yes, and it worked. Nice, lovely. I'm sure that was lovely to pick up, wasn't it? Um, cool. All right. So the next thing we could do to our game is we could add some enemies. Now these. Um, so what we could do in our kitchen, for example, we could add a monster. Okay. So. We do this very similar to how we, we added the, the item, the key. So I'm going to put in our kitchen at the end of this line. I'm not going to forget my comma this time because I forgot this before and it broke our program. So I remember to put my comma. And then I'm going to put uh, another, I'm going to put an item in the kitchen. And this item is going to be a uh, monster. OK. So what we could do at the moment, this isn't going to work exactly how we want. So if we if we try, if we try the game here, so we're currently in the hall. OK, if I go south into the kitchen, it's going to say you see a monster. But at the moment, it just thinks that the monster is an item like any other item. Um, like any, any other item. So I think we could probably say get monster and it says monster got um, and it says the monster is in our inventory. And that's not really what we want. We don't want to pick up the monster like we do um, the other items in our in our maze, such as the key. What we want um, to happen is we want the game to end when we see a monster because we, we don't want to go into the room where a monster is. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of code to um, to change the game so that if we see a monster, we can't just pick up the monster. It actually ends the game. OK, so so where are we going to add this in the game? So so at the moment we have um, we have this dictionary of all the items in the room in the in the game. And then we have this bit of code that tells us where we start, this bit of code that shows the instructions of how to play the game. Um, and then we have this loop. So this uh, within this loop, we're, um, so this is where we, we get the players move and then we, we move to the room. So this looks more like it. This looks like where the game is actually um, going on, where all the moves are made. All the stuff above this is just the stuff that happens right at the beginning of the game, such as showing the instructions. So I think it's going to be within this loop somewhere here. So we'll have a little bit, uh, a little bit of a deeper look in here. 
so what we're we doing here so this is where we're getting the players move and then we're um so that's getting their input okay um so that's uh so this is if they want to um they want to move to a room okay so this is where they're moving into a um we're handling the go and this is where we're handling the get okay so so these are the two um, bits of code that handle either the going or getting. So I think after this would be would be a good place to put our new code. So it's once we've moved um, into um, a room, uh, we could uh, we could see if there's a monster in there. So um, so at the end here, so I'm going to um, put a new line at the end of this file. We need to make sure that we're we're only indented one because we want to be inside the loop. So if we're one indent in, and um, we're inside the loop. So I I use I do these indents by pressing the tab key on my keyboard. So one in is just inside the loop. If we go further than that in, so if we go two tabs in, Python is going to think what we're writing should be inside this. Um, this if statement. So it's only going to um, run the bit of code that we write um, if, if this statement is true. And that's not really what we want. So we need to make sure that we're just one tab in at the bottom here. OK, so we're going to write, um, write our piece of code. So if the player um, enters a room that has a monster in, then they lose. OK. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to say if. So if is kind of um, is a part of the Python language that 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 allows us to say so if this is true, so if a certain condition is true, then the program should do something. So we're going to say if item, and that's in uh, single quotes, is uh, in rooms. And then um, square brackets, current room. So um, so what's that saying? So that's saying if um, in the, the current room, rooms, so rooms is our list of room, is our dictionary of rooms here. Current room is the room that we're in. So say we're in the hallway to start. So it's going to have a look at um, the hallway in the list of rooms, in the dictionary of rooms, sorry. So it's going to look at um, this dictionary here. And we're saying if there is an item in that room. So is there an item in my hallway? Yes, there is. So that condition would be true. However, if we um, we asked Python if there's um, an item in the dining room, that would be false because I haven't got an item in the dining room. So that's just checking, is there an item in that room? OK, so so that's going to tell us if there's an item in the room, but we only want to, to end the game if there's a monster in the room. We don't want to end the game if there's just a key or any other type of item in there. So we can say if item is in the room and monster um, is in the the room. So now we have to say, so if monster is in the rooms, and that's going to be current room again. Um, and then we need to say another um, square brackets and in there, we put item. So this one needs to be in quotes because we're saying um, if, if in the room that we're looking at, so we say we're looking at the kitchen, in um, of the current room, in the item, is that monster, OK? So we're saying if monster is in the current room of the item, so if that's true. So so this, so this everything that's inside um, this if statement or the code that's indented underneath is only going to run if both of these are true, OK? 
So we put a colon at the end, we press enter, and you'll see that we've indented in underneath um, our if condition. So everything that we write here is going to only run if both of these conditions are true. We're going to print a message to the player. So um, we can say to the player, um, game over. Um, a monster has got you. OK. Um, and then after that, we need to put um, break. So this break um, does something specific. So what does that do? So you'll see this um, this loop says it loops forever. And that's just going to keep going around asking the player for a move each time. But what we can do is we can say break, and then that will stop the loop cycle. Oh, it looks like when I've selected break, um, it's actually given me a bit of information about what that's doing at the bottom of the screen. I don't know how to remove that now. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe don't press that. Ah, oh, there it is. Less. There it is. I've managed to get rid of it. OK. So it gives us a bit of information about what that does at the bottom of the screen. So use break to stop the loop cycle. So when we say break, it's going to stop looping around all of this code. OK, so when we have a look at these two conditions, let's just um, look again at what they mean. So this one's saying if item is in, um, so if the room, if the current room that we're in has an item, so what would this be true for? So the hallway does have an item. Yeah, it's the key. The kitchen has an item. Yes, it's the monster. Um, however, these two rooms don't have um, an item. So if it's just that, so for just this first bit here, that would be true for the, 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 hall, the hall and the kitchen, and it would be false for the dining room and the living room. But then we're also going to check, is the item a monster? which is only going to be true for the um, um, for the kitchen. OK. Hey, Ben. Um, I think there's a couple of people who would like a bit of a recap on some of it. I was hoping you'd be able to look at where you go to to um, from adding the monster to adding the if statement. OK, so so we've added um, a monster to our room. But when we when we first added it, we just added it as an item like um, like any other item. So the same as the key. And we tried that out in our in our game. And we so we started in the hall. We moved to the kitchen. And it said, you see a monster, which doesn't sound very good. But the game actually allowed us to just type get monster and pick up the monster, because although we've called it a monster, it doesn't actually act any different to our key. It's just an item in the room at this point. Um, so we were able to pick up the monster and put it in our inventory, which isn't what we wanted. So what we wanted to do is we wanted the, um, when we see the monster, when we enter a room with the monster, we want the game to finish. We want the game to end. So what we had to do is we we had a look at our at our game code, and we saw that um, within this loop. So this loop is where um, each of the the actions happen. So every time this loop loops round, it asks the player for a move, such as um, going somewhere or picking something up. And then when the player um, inputs that move, then we either go in the direction that the player asks, or we pick up the item that the player requests. So after they've done, um, we've handled that. So after we've handled either moving to a, to a room or picking up an item, we can check if we're in, um, if we're in a room with a monster. So we can say, if in the current room there is an item, so we're going to check first, is there an item in the room? So um, that would be, uh, we'd say, 
yes, there is an item in the hall and there's an item in the kitchen. And we do that by saying, um, if there is an item in the, the current room, and we and we get that from the the rooms dictionary. So, so current room is just is just the um, the name of the room. However, when we when we get the definition of the of the current room from our rooms dictionary, it gives us the um, the definition of that room. So we're able to see it within that definition if there is an item in that room. Okay, so that's just going to tell us if there's an item in the room or not. And then next, what we want to do is we want to check if that item is a monster. So if we um, we have a look at the the definition of the room, so that's what we have here, the same as that. So we have the definition of the room. We then want to look at um, within that definition, we want to look at the value of item. So we want to see what is the value of item in that room. And is that monster? So if we, um, so this little bit of code here says if um, if the item in the room is a monster, then this is true. So we have these two conditions here. So first of all, is there an item in the room? And if there there is an item in the room, is the item a, a monster? So if both of these are true, so it's saying if this is true and this is true. Than, than do the following. And, and we know that um, these bits of code are only um, executed or run if, these can, if this condition is true because they're indented underneath. So that's how we tell that these bits of code are only run. So you can see these, these spaces underneath. So this indentation is very important and it tells Python to only run these bits of code if this is true. So if this is true, then we want to print a message to the player. So we're going to say game over, our monster has got you. And then we want to stop the game because if we just printed that out, we could say game over, our monster has got you. If we didn't have this break, we would just go around to the next turn and then it would ask the player for another move. So we have to say break. And what break does is it stops the loop. So it's going to say um, stop this loop here. Um, and then that's going to finish the game because there's going to be no more moves. Cool. All right, so let's try that out. So we're currently in the hall and that's fine. So where did we put our monster? So our monster was in the kitchen. Okay, so let's try moving south. So let's type go south and it says game over, a monster has got you. So that works as we expect. OK, so let's just check that we haven't broken anything else. So can we go to all of the other rooms? Um, so, so at the moment in the kitchen, we can't go to, but we should be able to go east, go into the dining room. And that's fine. We, we haven't hit the monster. Um, then we should be able to go south to our living room. That's good as well. We haven't hit the monster. But now I think if we say go west, then we're going to get caught by the monster. OK, so we've added a way to lose the game. But um, we haven't got a way of winning the game at the moment. So let's try and do that. So we're going to add a garden to um, to our house. So in mine, I'm going to say um, add a new add a new room. I'm going to call this the garden. And this is very similar to what we've done before. I'm going to say this garden is um, to the um, uh, so from the garden, if we go, sorry, this needs to be in quotes. So from the garden, if we go north, we could be in the living room. That needs to be in single quotes again. So we're going to put our garden underneath our living room. 
and then um, and then remember from the the living room we need to be able to get out to the garden so we're able to get at the moment from the garden to the living room but we need to go the other way as well so our living room we're going to add a new direction I'm going to say the south of the living room is the garden okay So we've now got a new room to the south of our living room. So let's try that. So, so let's run our game again. So we're currently in the hall. So I think if we go east, we're going to be in the dining room. We can then go south to the living room. And we go south again to the garden. OK, so we've added a new room and we're able to, to get to our new room. However, at the moment, the game hasn't finished. We can just go um, we can go back back up to the north. We can just keep going around the house forever until we hit the monster. So what we want to do is we want to to make it so that we win when we get to the garden. So where could we do that? So this is the bit of code that we have that um, tells the game when we lose. So it's going to be something very similar to um, to instruct the game to tell Python that when we get to the um, garden that we should win. So underneath here, so underneath our bit of our if statement where we um, we're checking if we're in the same room as a monster, I'm going to create a new if statement. Now remember this needs to be indented just once again. If it was indented twice, like these bits of code, then our uh, then that wouldn't work because that would only um, that bit of code would only be run if if um, if if this statement is true, and that's not what we want. So this one uh, we want to say is the current room the garden. So what we're saying here is we're saying if the current room, so that's the room that we're in at the moment equals the garden. We have to put a double equals here because we're not saying the current room is garden. We're asking, is it garden? So we're saying if the current room is the garden, then at the end there, we're going to put um, a colon. So we're going to say if the current room is the garden, then run the following code. So similar to before, I'm going to put a print statement. And I'm going to say, um, you win, um, you escaped the house. Okay, um, so we've said if the current room is the garden, so the player has got to the garden, then we're going to print to the player, you win. And then after that, we want to stop asking the player for, for more moves. So we're going to say break. OK, so I'm just going to share a link to my code in the chat. Um, I'm going to send it to everyone. Cool. So so if you've got a little bit stuck and you want to, to have a look at my code, if you click on that link, then you should be able to see um, to see what I've written. So just to recap, so we've we've added a new room, which is the garden. The garden is south of the living room. And then we've put a new condition at the end. And we've said, if the current room is the garden, then we're going to print out to the player. You win, you've escaped the house. And we're going to break, which remember stops the, the loop going around. OK, so let's try that out, see if it works. So we're going to run our game again. Now I think we can go east to the dining room. Then we can go south to the living room. And then hopefully if we go south again, it's going to say you win, you've escaped the house because we've got out to the garden. OK, but what we can actually do is if you remember, we have this inventory and we're able to pick up items, but we haven't actually used that yet, have we? So what we could 
say is we could um, only let the player win if they've um, if they've escaped the house, if they've got to the garden, and they've picked up the key. Okay, so what we can do is we can um, amend our condition um, that for um, that lets us know if the game has been won or not. So at the moment, we're only checking if the current room is garden. But what we could also do is we could say and, which means there's two conditions for winning the game. So we have to be both um, have the current room as the garden. And we could say if um, key is in the inventory. OK. So we've got two conditions now. We're saying if the current room is the garden and we have the key in our inventory, then we tell the player that they've won and they've escaped the house. OK. So let's run this again and see how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to pick up the key. because I'm going to try see what happens if I don't pick up the key. So I'm going to say go east, and then I think if I go um, go south, and then go south again. So it looks like we've got to the garden, but we haven't got the key. So the game hasn't told us we've won because we haven't satisfied both conditions. Yes, we've got to the garden, but if you remember, we've said you only win if you've got to the garden and you've got the key in your inventory. So what I can do now is I could I could restart the game. I can just go back so I can go up twice and then I can go to the to the west. So I'm back in the hall and it's telling me I see the key. So I think I can pick up the key by typing in get key. OK, so I'm now in the hall and I've got the key. So now I can uh, not south. Sorry, that will take me to the kitchen. And then I think there's a monster in there that would have got me. So I think I want to go east to the dining room. So now in the dining room, I've still got my key and go south um, and then south again. And then I've escaped the house with the key. So the game has told me that we've won. OK, cool. So I think that's probably um, about all we have time for on the game. So I'm going to go ahead and share a link to where we've got up to today. So if you didn't quite get to the end, you can, um, if you click on that link, then you should be able to see the code that we've gone through together um, and work on that. So, so now you can go ahead, if you want, you can um, take this further. You can add way more rooms to the game. You could add lots of different items. And, and on these conditions, you're not limited to even just two. So you could say, um, if you wanted to, to check if you've got two different items in your inventory, we could add another condition at the end. So we could say, so say if we wanted to pick up a book. Um, so I haven't added the book anywhere in my house, but I could say the player only wins if they've also added a book to the inventory. So you can go away and you can uh, make this game much bigger and much more difficult if you want. We, we had a thought over here, Ben. Thank, thanks for showing us all that, by the way. That was fantastic. Um, we had an idea that maybe you could take a potion. And if you've taken the potion, you can then defeat, the monster, yeah, that you can defeat the monster. And then, and then you get a bonus point. And it, and if, and, and, but, and then you could say, and, and another if there saying, if, po if you have, po um, there could be, I don't know. Yeah, we'll work, <laughs> we'll work on it. We'll get back to you on that one. Yeah, that sounds good. So yeah, um, so all, you, so to do that, you can just um, keep changing these conditions to, to match exactly how you want your, your game to work. Um, so I think you'd be able to do something like that. Cool. So I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much, um, Ali and Doug, for helping us out today. No, thank really. you, Ben. Thanks for teaching us some. Um, that was some pretty gnarly Python we were doing today. That was pretty tricky. Yeah, I really liked it. Thank Good. You.
that's no problem. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone else for joining us today. Um, hopefully we'll see you again um, next week. And thank you very much. I hope you have um, a lovely weekend. Cheers, everyone. Bye.